I mean, well, we had two videos for yesterday, so hopefully, hopefully y'all watch Billy Eilish, Renee Rap. Yeah, we double uploaded. I double uploaded. Yeah, so go so check those out. Those. I know y'all been suggesting hella reaction videos, so don't worry, we seeing them, but it's just a lot more we're supposed to see. Like we got a lot in our watch laters yeah. that y'all suggested. So be please be patient. Just wait. And just make sure you're subscribed and notified because we we will react to them. We just, we just don't know when we're on. Right. So just be patient. We will do it for sure. Trust us. Yeah. But it's just a lot of reaction videos y'all want us to react to. So just be beware. Bear with us, please. Bear, bear with us. But uh, we got y'all for sure. So. Uh, Sorry about our dog. That's our dog Sasha. You know she got to make an appearance. For real, it's only right. All right. So anything. Um. So still, uh, we're still coming up with a name. I think we already have a name. Kind of a wild card for y'all, but um, wait, should I announce it or should I just uh, make it wait? Okay, so we do have a name for y'all, but we'll wait on it. It will wait, but it's definitely a wild card, it has nothing to do with our name, though. yeah. Nothing to do with our name, nothing. Okay, yeah. that's just be where, but y'all can still drop some ideas if y'all got some for the name. But it, yeah. well, we have one that we think y'all gonna fuck with heavy. But we won't announce it yet. But uh, we'll keep y'all on y'all toes about it. So just keep um, on coming up with ideas for yeah, keep cooking those stuff. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else we gotta say? You're not a basic. So like, comment, subscribe. Really. Basically. Share the channel. Like. Do what y'all gotta do. Subscribe. Subscribe. Y'all do y'all part. We gonna do ours. So. Uh, yup. So. Uh, it's gonna be a long video. So. You already know. Okay. Yeah, it is a long video. Of course. So it's going to starts right now. Once again, shout out, shout out to uh, what's the dirt. Mm -hmm. um, and we also we will be reacting to all the other diss track breakdowns that he does. I think Euphoria is the only one he has so far, so it's going to take him a while. But anyway, that meet the Grams one, that one's going to be that one's going to be crazy. Sweating. That one's going to be crazy. His hair going to be all types of <laughs> for real. His hair going to be all over the place, boy. Nah. He needs to sip another coffee. But let's see what he's talking about. Drake and Kendrick Lamar Strawberry hate each other. Smoothie. Well, at least one of them hates the other person, while the other has tried many times to be friendly and squash things. One rapper seemed to believe that they were actually friends, while the other looked at their relationship as a business transaction. Mm. After two weeks of research, it's safe to say that one MC has lost every ounce of respect for the other. You guys really liked my last video where I broke down all the subliminal disses from Drake's new album? So I decided to stick with a similar style. And in my last video, I, I asked you guys to hit the like button, which is something I don't usually do, but the video did really well. I and I don't like know button. if that's why, but like just do me a favor and hit that like button again. Thanks. So when it comes to Kendrick and Drake, they weren't always on bad terms. Back in 2011, Drake had already blown up and Kendrick had yet to release a major debut album. Now, Kendrick was definitely he buzzing, dedicated but he him. was far from the star that Drake was. Even back in 2009, Kendrick mentioned Drake on a track where he pretty much admits that he thinks he's better. So, hmm. Oh, he been missing though? Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. That reminds me of a Drake song. I can't think of the song. Like the name of the song, but uh, I remember like he was talking about in the song, he was talking about like he was in like a car with like a girl, and the girl she was playing like someone else's music, like she wouldn't play like his music or something like that. Drake, it was like when he was coming up, 
I forgot. I forgot. He mentioned the rapper's name. I can't remember. Somebody in the comments, they, they might uh, they might say it, but uh, let me say it's not when I probably don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm saying, no, right. <laughs> it sounds it do sound familiar. It does sound familiar. It does sound familiar. I ain't gonna lie. But Kendrick identified really early on that the mainstream hip hop wasn't really his thing. However, on June 16, 2011, Kendrick performed in Toronto for the very first time, and when Drake found out he was in the city, he decided to hit him up so that they could meet. I need y'all to go. This is my first time I meet you, And Kendrick would speak about meeting Drake in a double XL magazine and said, That's a real good dude. He got a real genuine soul. We clicked immediately. And it was during that meeting that Kendrick provided Drake with a copy of his unreleased album, Section 80. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. Kendrick said that Drake was the first person outside of his team to hear Section 80 and that Drake was blown away by the project. Mm. I even found a 2011 tweet where Drake posted Kendrick's lyrics from ADHD. We never do this unless it comes with an eight away. Drake liked Kendrick's music so much that he asked him to be on his upcoming sophomore album, Take Care. Throughout the track, Kendrick talks about meeting Drake for the first time and how he was surprised that Drake wasn't fake like most of the music business. Mm. But wait, there's, there's more. more. There he spoke yeah. to someone. Yeah. <laughs> we will see. Surprised that Drake happened. wasn't fake like most of the music business. Hit me on the cellar, I thought he was gonna sell me a first word like the rappers I know. Hendrick outlines how Drake showed him a taste of what being rich and famous actually looked like. Sat down with a few drinks located where you can't see us. A white waitress on standby when we need a. On the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Mm. Yeah, like, damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the lifestyle and would that make me a breaky? And that was what the whole record was about when I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, mm. we could see the difference in these two artists where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life, and Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his, you know, his relationships, his friendships. It's interesting because just two or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression the way you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. Did the industry cause that? Not, not the industry, just the change. And Drake only mm. continues to show That's Kendrick deep. more love by taking him and ASAP Rocky on his Club Paradise tour. This is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I swear, artists got a theme for calling each other brother. I mean, it, it it's, just, like, it's just like, yeah. yeah right. Nigga, you know you're not. <laughs> like, no, you're the fuck not. Like, I mean, probably like in like that moment yeah. with him, ASAP Rocky, and Kendry, he probably really did like feel like they were like brothers. I'm pretty sure. Shit, around the time when they was dropping like all those songs together, I thought like, man, I don't think these dudes are all cool and shit. Doing fucking problems. Um, doing poetic justice and. You know, all of them were like, you know, like really like collabing for real. Just crazy, like, just didn't age well. But I'm like, it's just, they use that shit so loosely. They I'm like, bro, no, you're not. Like, I don't know. I don't think I would call. Well, I don't know. I'm probably, I probably don't know. But I mean, how I am, I don't be calling girls my yeah. sister that fast. I don't. Like, yeah. I'm like, hey, man, what's up, sis? I'm like, no, the fuck you not. <laughs> I'm like, you're not my sister, bro. Like, right. no, you're not. And you're not my bro. Like, my brother. No, you're not. Yeah. Like, I don't use that shit. Like, I mean, you should. Like, I feel like I can only call you that if we grew up together and you know me deeply. Like, yeah. you've seen me, like, I don't know, like, cry or be deep. Like, yeah. that's the only way I can call you that. Other than that, we just see each other, we cool, you all of a sudden want to call me a sis or like whatever. I'm like, no, right. we're not doing that. Like, I don't know, for me, I it's know it's different. not, yeah, it's just different, but for me, it just seems fake to me. Yeah. Because it's like, you don't have to say that to be like, move me over. Like, yeah. You ain't got to do all that. Like, nah. That's just me, though. Club Paradise Tour, matter of fact, my nigga Drake, TDE, hot power, we in this and Drake has always claimed to have fought with management to take these guys on tour because his label had other plans. He did say that in the song. I remember. Signed to that, signed to that nigga. I remember one one of his songs. He said like, um, I think it was like one of like his timestamp songs or whatever. But uh, I think it's five a.m. in Toronto. He was saying like uh, the label wanted him to take on like R and B like R and B dudes, and he wanted Kendrick and Rocky. Who? That's what Drake said. 
He said his label wanted his label wanted him to take like R and B dudes on like his tour. But Drake said he wanted ASAP Rocky and Kendrick. Um. So. People I can put on here that the label wants me to put on here, but I fight for this one reason, man. Like I fight to promote what I love. You know what I'm saying? I, I fight to promote the music that I truly love. So Drake would mention this again in 2016 on his track 4 p.m. in Calabasas. When he told me take an R and B uh, to go on the road, and I told him no, and drew for Kendrick and Rocky. Yeah. However, Kendrick's superstardom quickly catches up with Drake. As a year later, he dropped one of the best hip hop albums of all time, Good Kid, Mad City. I used. Mm -hmm. mm. Good Kid, Mad City, still classic a classic. Album. Still a classic. Classic. Yeah. I used to be jealous of Vera Navano. He was the one to follow. And Black Boy Fly is a, a bonus track, but to me. That's one of the, the most beautiful songs on that album. Absolutely amazing storytelling. It. And it was on that album where Drake returns the favor and gives Kendrick a feature on Poetic Justice. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience. And on the day that the album dropped, Drake even posted a tweet saying, congratulations to Kendrick, incredible body of work, honored to be a part of it. However, even at this point, Kendrick and Drake could Okay, I kind of can see why maybe Kendrick wasn't feeling Drake. Because, like, I feel like Drake, it sounded like he was just trying to work. Yeah, like... Like, I understand, like, probably y'all are like, watching this who, like, you probably don't, like, see it. But, like, I don't know, I kind of I kind of get it. I kind of can like, see he's it. Like, he's trying, if he, he, he on his dick too much. Yeah, pretty he much. He on his dick too much. Yeah. But it's like, bro, okay, chill. Yeah. Like, I, I, you fuck with my shit, like, cool. That right. is cool. Like, at that point, you coming across as slowly fake. I ain't gonna lie to you. Now you coming across as fake. Honored to be a part of this. However, even at this point, Kendrick and Drake couldn't be more different in terms of how they approach music and life in general. Really, money really don't make me, I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my um, my peace of mind, having money. I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love the shoulders? Exactly. I just love her shoulders. She's yeah. actually yeah. blushing yeah. as well. She's no so about so it. Creepy. They're just two Tiger different guys. Next, we get a bit of an inside look on how Kendrick actually Tiger sees Drake as a person yeah. when the legend himself, DMX, claims that he would love to beat Drake up. Hmm. Man, I wish it was like maybe seven years ago well maybe like like 10 years ago well you know catch the other to beat him up <laughs> <laughs> and just a few days later kendrick was asked about his thoughts on dmx's rant and he thought it was hilarious saying that his entire tour bus nearly died of laughter i wonder why these in the front of the bus just cracking up like it was and shit mm. just crying like no oh. What you niggas talk about? They mute, they stop laughing, right? I just hear X going off on a laptop. Massive. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It's like, going in right now. <laughs> now remember, Drake is pretty sensitive, so if, if he did see that, he probably felt a way about it. So if the two would work together. Like, even, like, alright, Drake, so DMX said that he want to beat you up. Kendrick and his homies laughing about it. He's like, what do y'all want him to do? Y'all want, like, you want Kendrick and his team to go jump DMX? <laughs> it's like, come on, right, bro. Like, like, they crazy. got too much respect for him. Nigga, you man. go jump from there, shit. Yeah. Go fight him. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> RP DMX. All right. I don't like The very oh. last time on one of 2013's biggest hits, ASAP Rocky's Problems. Girl, I never want that dude. Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar. Well, that okay, was it. Comment down below who had the best verse on that song. I swear, I remember back. <laughs> Cause I swear, I remember back in the day, like everybody was like trying to decide who had like the best verse, and it still feels like now, like people still trying to decide. So comment down below. I don't even know my damn stuff. I, I haven't listened to that song in years, but uh, I remember back then. I remember Drake. His verse was pretty good. Robbie <laughs> White Drake verse. Yeah, I mean Drake was a slider. But I did, I mean, obviously, I did fuck with Kendrick's verse, too. Oh, I gotta listen. Yeah. But, like... And two channels on this song. Mm -hmm. I got a bad problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want that dick. Well, comment down below. Yeah. I'm Kendrick Lamar. Well, that was Kendrick, it. Kendrick After Lamar. that, you never see these two on a track together again. It's In sad. 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive Control. between the two. 
because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up and comer, he had become that guy. You get a lot of that accolades boy. from your peers and the hip hop icons. Thank you. Yeah. I love Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Number one on that list, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? Uh, the the hip hop savior, it seems like. Woo! And let's not forget, Drake is still. Dude. So, I'm saying Drake was jealous. Yeah, honestly, he really was. Like, it's crazy, like. Because that's what Drake wanted. Drake wanted to look like the savior of hip hop. Especially around this time, and like he put on Kendrick, even though Kendrick was already doing the shit. But I guess Drake kind of put him on like the public's eye, I guess you could say. And um, and like now, like 2013, Kendrick is like blown up. Drake probably trying to take like all like the credit. That's why he wanted to be buddy buddy on so bad. Yeah, he's he all, wanted to he be saw, like, he's all potential. He did, and he wanted to snatch his uh, oh. He wanted to snatch his uh, little pen, his right. little pen game, his cadence and everything. That's yeah. why he was like For real. fiending so hard and trying so hard. Like he did it with the weekend, I think yeah, too. He do it with any yeah. artist that he meet, and he be trying to. Oh, Drake slimy as shit. Now yeah. I think about it. Yeah, that's. He anything that he oh he is a fucking colonizer. Yeah, we want to wait. We want to <laughs> He had a phenomenal year also. Shout out to Hamilton. Shout, Shout out to, to Toronto Sam. one time. <laughs> like a best rap album goes in. And they said take care. Oh, oh, my God. God. Take care. Go, Given the success of both artists, the media, and fans started to debate who was better. And Kendrick started off the year with a bang when he was awarded MTV's hottest MC in hip hop. Mm. Yeah, we went through about 15 of them, narrowed wow. it down to 10. The 10 became 5, the 5 became 2. And you, Kendrick Lamar, are the hottest MC in the mm. game, according to the MTV brand. And most of Kendrick's hip hop friends seem to be happy for him. I heard you not happy about that. Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one. K Dot, Kendrick, yes. so I'm straight with that. However, Drake Where was one at? person that certainly did not yeah. send. Not in the studio. Yeah. I don't care what y'all say about ASAP Rocky. ASAP <laughs> Rocky, bro, he could rap. Yeah, I hope he does drop albums on. <laughs> but it's crazy, like, going back to... Hold up. Like, when we saw J. Cole, and Big And Sean. most of Kendrick's hip-hop. These dudes look so young, bro. It's crazy seeing this. But it's crazy, like, we still relying on all these dudes to, like, carry, like, the rap game now. It's kind of it's sad. Right, but the rappers today are ass. Yeah. Friends seem to be happy for not wrong. I heard you not happy about that. Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one. K Dot, yes. Drake, so I'm straight with that. However, Drake was one person that certainly did boy, not man. send any sort of congratulations to Kendrick. What about your rap peers? Did they call? I, I know it's kind of competitive, so did they say congratulations? The rap peers? Um. He cold. Okay. Yeah. Really? And I mean, at this point, Drake's at least got to be thinking like, this guy's starting to become a problem. He's he's getting a little bit close now. And <laughs> Kendrick's winning streak yeah, hey. was just beginning, as two months later he cleaned up at the 2013 BET Awards, winning the Best Male Hip Hop Artist over Drake. I came up in that same county building, food stamps, welfare, Section Eight. And this time, yeah, I yeah. did find a tweet from Drake where he congratulates Kendrick on the win. Congrats Nothing to Kendrick as well. Nothing was the same. So he's been doing all this all that said, tweeting bullshit since then. Yeah, that, well, he don't even be on Twitter anymore. Like, Drake, like, he said that he was trying to be funny. Yeah. Talking about nothing was the fun. Like, he always doing some little childish petty shit on the low. Yeah. That was like a, a nasty, Subliminal. a nasty congratulations. Like a yeah. backhand congratulations. Yeah, like, congratulations, but nothing was the same. Ever since me and you was mm. He ain't sleep, bro. Jack is not. Things sleep. were about to change. Mm. That is crazy, August 12th, 2013 was a special moment for hip hop. To this day, it still stands out as one of the most exciting things to happen in the last decade. On Big Sean's control, Kendrick let everyone in hip hop know just how competitive he was when it came to that number one spot. <laughs> Yeah. That boy said, this my shit. Mm. This my shit. Mm -hmm. I'm usually homeboys with the same cause I'm rhyming with. But this is hip hop and the you know what time it is. And that goes for Jamaica, Cole, be quick, my lay. 
Push your team, meat meals, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, Jay Electron, Tyler McMillan. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now to vert from you niggas. And we could Gosh. really, really use a moment like that right now in hip hop. It's rain like a spay weather, good music, yay weather, champagne just tastes better. And let's just give it up for Big Sean because to me, he had one of his career best verses, but it just got overshadowed because of Kendrick's verse. I said fuck trying and not doing, cause not doing is something a nigga not doing. I grew up the end big and pop bitch and got ruined. So until I got the same crib, big head in that juicy vid, bitch, I can't mother stop moving. But when it came to Kendrick's verse, nobody that he mentioned had a problem with it. K dot and them niggas, that's fam, yo. I think hip hop need this shit, man. You know. You know, I been Real. I knew what it was for hip hop culture. I knew how important it was. He said my name, like you said, my name said my couple of people's name and he said he's the best rapper. I say I'm the best rapper every song I'm on. Oh. Yeah, but he wasn't coming at him in that three special yeah. ways coming at him in that. Get so for me it's one of the things where I appreciate it. I ain't taking this seriously as a bitch. Hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. This I just like, I don't know, it, it just wasn't real to me. It's like, <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know. I, I saw him after that and it was just like, love. So it's like, was that real or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I think like, it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but you know, at the sparring. same time, it's like, you know, then let it be real then, you know, I mean, because those were harsh words, right? So it's like, that deep don't just, you can't just oh, say that and then see me and be like, yeah, man, what's up? Pretending like nothing ever happened. Like, that's not real. And it's right. <sighs> Drake. Drake's so soft. Yeah, that was the softest shit you could ever say. Because yeah, like, just real? looking, just looking at how everyone else took it, like, everybody was like, man, like, Hey, like, we got love for him. It's competition. And, like, they all be saying, like, hey, like, I be saying, like, I'm the greatest. So, I mean, he could say it, too. Mm -hmm. And Drake. Yeah, I don't like it. He was being a little too mean. He kind of <laughs> hurt my feelings. It's like, come on, you bro. You know the body that gave up on occasion. <laughs> Yeah, boy, was no, that shit just gave up suburban, suburban kid vibes. That's what I'm like, saying. For real, it's like, come on, bro. That's exactly what I'm saying. Here's a perfectly good example of why people right. call Drake soft. It sounded like you ain't really made for this shit. For real, I'm curious. I'm curious what J Cole said, and um, it was someone else uh, who was on there. They didn't go to uh, Pusha T. They probably don't even care because they did songs. They did songs with Kendrick after that, so. Right. And emotional. You can't act this way and then sit back and wonder why people are labeling you as such. Like this is this is why. And it's interesting it because when Drake came into the game, he seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's it's a great thing though to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean, and look, Drake was not a rapper that you could just push around. He did go toe to toe with people before. Back in the day, a Toronto rapper by the name of Aristo. Seriously tried to end Drake's career, mm. and it didn't end well for this guy. It's the room of resolution, I'm finishing it in hand. If I copy buttons flow, you mimicking his career. It was good riddance, it was lights out. It was good riddance, it was lights out. It was a body, <laughs> and that's what it was, man. And that's why, good riddance, and, it, and what happened? Good riddance, right? Bye. I remember when this dropped Nigga. because it was all over the hip hop blogs in Canada. And yeah, we did have hip hop blogs in Canada in 2009. They did exist. With all that said, Drake dropped Nothing Was The Same and we get to hear the first subliminal shot for Kendrick. Uh -huh. On the track titled The Language, Drake immediately mm. starts out with a shot. I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. So when Kendrick's control verse dropped, Drake stated on multiple occasions that he did not find the verse impressive, that he thought it was for shock value, and that it would soon be forgotten. But it was it was real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. But like, if I ask you, for example, like, how does that verse start? <laughs> One of Drake's more notable claims was that Kendrick had a great first album, but he questioned whether or not he could do it again. And as far as Kendrick goes, like I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And, and, and consistency has is, is been one album. Consistency is like you need more than one album. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's time I mean, to show. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. But still, like he he really was just waiting for Kendrick's downfall. Biggest hater. Yeah. Like Lucky. See, he want to talk about Kendrick being fake about like the whole rap battle yeah. thing. 
whole time it was you who was being fake. You was cheering Kendrick on. You yeah, you should be tour, his biggest fan. All types of shit. And then now when he's dissing your feelings her not you just like flat out, man, fuck him. Well, it, well it, it seemed like it started before that. Like, it started... And like, it seems like after he uh, tried to put on Kendrick, you know, trying to be like his biggest fan and all that shit, then when... Basically, like, when Kendrick blew up, the whole world saw Kendrick saying, like, oh, like, he's, like, the next, like, you know, like, the next, like, GOAT, basically. And everyone just pushed Drake to, like, the side. That's when Drake, he was like, man, like, I don't even like him, for real. And so, and that's what made Kendrick want to diss him in, uh, on uh, Control. Right. Because Drake, Drake didn't, like, give him, like, no props. Like, uh, like, he said, like, uh, J. Cole, like, hit him up. Like, when you won the uh, best MC or whatever. Like, he won, like, all, like, those BET awards and shit like that. So, like, everybody, like, everybody else, like, supported him besides Drake. So, he's like, all right, bet. I'm finna go attack him on, uh, on, uh, control. And that's what led to all this. Yeah, because I'm saying Drake was jealous of Kendrick. He was. So, I was right. That nigga, Drake was jealous of Kendrick this whole time. He Pretty never much. liked Kendrick. He was being fake towards Kendrick. He was trying to use him. Basically. And now he got all this energy to say, like, oh, can he be consistent? Like, nigga, what? I mean, it's a fair question to ask, because, I mean, at the... At the time, I'm trying to think about like at the time, like Good Kid, Mad City was like a deb his debut uh, album. Section Eight was kind of like a mixtape or whatever. So, um, so I mean, it's a fair question to ask, but it's like he was just waiting for this man to fall off. It's crazy. He was playing like he was off for real. Prove it. Drake claimed that he was all about putting out memorable bodies of work as opposed to creating moments. When it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. However, Drake continues to send some more shots. Okay, they nigga that's talking that shit just to get a reaction. Again, Drake refers to Kendrick as someone that wrote the control verse to get attention. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. A motor mouth is defined as a person who talks quickly and continuously often without considering what they're saying. In this case, someone that raps fast. It's clearly about Kendrick. Talking that shit with your back to me, just know it always get back to me. So outside of the DMX comment, there were some other interviews where Kendrick had laughed at Drake's expense. I heard about you touring with Drake. Yeah. I was like, that's dope, that's dope. And I was like, well, I hope it doesn't hang with Drake too hard because yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake isn't exactly doing what we thought he would, what many of nerdy backpackers like myself thought he might be doing a few years ago. Right. And honestly, man, at this point, I would not be one bit surprised if Kendrick said something behind Drake's back and it got back to him. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. At the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards, Hendrick decided to throw some gas on the fire. Mm. He went into the awards with the most nominations at 14, and Drake was a very close second with 13. Hey, However, Hendrick would be the man to come out on top, winning Lyricist of the Year, MVP of the Year, Album of the Year, and Feature of the Year. Mm. Drake also came out with Dang. a handful of a Dude, I think Drake could have been nominated for all those. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, I'm... I see why he hated on him. I I can see why, but it's like, man, dude, like. Kendrick is his competition. Yeah. Words for best hip hop video, track of the year, and people's champ. However, it would be Kendrick again that stole the show. Yeah, and nothing's been the same since they dropped the That's show. That's the cipher. The rapper back in his pajama clothes. High mm. high, jokes on you. High five. I'm bulletproof. This shit <laughs> could never penetrate. On the donkey, boy, been a so, oh pretty self explanatory. Kendrick fake. uses Drake's album title Nothing Was the Same to call him out for being sensitive regarding the control verse. And this whole thing got a lot of mm. people excited, and just the very next day, Sway movie. asked Kendrick if the bars were meant for Drake. Was uh, people want to know, was that directed towards Drake or anybody in, cool in, in particular? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But Drake did not seem to think so, and just a few weeks later, he came with some more subliminal shots on a future track titled Shit. And that's the name of the song, Shit. But, uh, I always like this record. I don't think I ever heard of this song. I always take a little Wayne. He did a real remix on his mixtape. Mm, I don't think I ever heard of this song. 
Took niggas out the hood like I'm from there. So you know it's all good when I come there. I hear you talk about your city like you're running. Took niggas out the hood like I'm from there. So you know you ain't from there. <laughs> that shit crazy. Only it, it seemed like he trying to say he took Kendrick out the hood. Cause Kendrick, uh, cause Kendrick's first um, show in Canada, or whatever. Maybe I'm guessing Drake trying to say like he helped him with it or whatever. So he like took him out the hood. So he trying to son him. That's, That's what he tried crazy. to do. The song, shit. But uh, oh, like I'm from there. I always like this record. Put niggas out the hood like I'm from there. So you know it's all good when I come there. I hear you talk about your city like you run there. Then I brought my tour to your city. You my son there, nigga. And to me, yeah, this is one of the song. best subliminal shots of the whole yeah, song. Like say. Drake <laughs> sounds like Jay Z here. It's a very hove like thing to say where he's just completely sunning Kendrick. So it's been known that Kendrick puts on heavy for the West Coast, claiming that he's the king. But Drake refers to him as his son because Kendrick went on his first big tour with Drake yeah. and of course they had some shows in California. At the time, even Kendrick admitted that he was not used to these large crowds. The transition of me doing you know, the 2000 beats I've been doing back then is, is a little sketchy for me doing this 10,000. I gotta really work some magic. I even found a Kendrick tweet from 2012 when he was mm. on tour with Drake where he says, finally home LA, club paradise, let's see what happens tonight. And if a nigga said my name, he'd a hot shit. But if I say that nigga name, he said a hot shit. I don't know why, you gotta be careful with like niggas like Drake. You see how he, like for Kendrick, he probably just really thought Drake was a genuine guy. And he yeah. was just like, helping you know like okay but then now when this shit because kendrick went and shit now drake hating and now he want to he want to flip it and say i brought you da, da, da. Yeah. like it's so i can't stand shit it's like, like that. i can't stand that that shit is so weird to me like why yeah. the fuck you want to make it seem like you got me out no the fuck you didn't i got out myself you like just i mean like bro and then he want to use that shit as to like it's like validation or something <laughs> Yeah, like it's just weird like people uh, like that you gotta be careful with that shit see, that's always wanna use that against you yeah like that's why like at the end of the day like you just better off just doing shit on your own <laughs> like and i think stop that, asking like I'm, I'm not saying like kendrick acts for like help or whatever but like in like this type of situation like bro like just keep doing like what you're doing like you're gonna get you're gonna get far for real it's just gonna take a little bit more time yeah, because it's like, I'm pretty sure Kendrick probably like, what the fuck? Like, I just thought this was like a genuine rap. Like, you know, you put me on and I just go from there. <laughs> like, I like, you put me on your show, cool. Like, of course, I, of course, he's going to take the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, who fucking would? Yeah. It's just like, Dre just trying to use that shit, like, yeah. and just flip it as a, yeah, I put him on, I found him, da da da, y'all yeah. get me crap. Like, it's so fucking weird. But, um,. But also with Kendrick, he is street smart. So like, it seemed like he he knew like what to do depending on how the shit was going to go. He probably, like, like, he probably seen it. Um, my bad. I thought that was Tasha. No, jumping. you did. But um, no, he probably did see it coming since it hit. I think he seen it coming. It's just, and he was probably prepared. Yeah, because I'm, like you said, like I genuinely do believe like he probably would, like really was cool with Drake. Like, yeah, like when they like, first met, like man, like you know you like a cool dude. I'm but, like, cool you, like you go on tour or someone, like you with them. Like I ain't gonna say twenty four seven, but like y'all literally like hanging out though on tour, mm -hmm. going to different cities. Who knows what Drake did? Drake probably did like some corny ass shit. And Kendrick just wasn't fucking with it as being a dude from Compton, where Drake is from the suburbs of Canada. It's like, you know. He probably just got weirded out. He's like, like, you know what? I'm finna just use him. Basically, yeah. Like, I'm finna just benefit off of this. But it's just, Jake is just, ugh. He's one of them. Yeah. He's just one of those. <laughs> Finally home, LA. Club Paradise. Let's see what happens tonight. And if a nigga said my name, he'd have high shit. But if I say that nigga name, he said a high shit. Drake was on the song, So this it. one clearly a reference to Kendrick's control verse. A lot of MCs responded to Kendrick with a verse of their own. Joe Budden, Meek Mill. So like, I swear, like I do remember, I do remember when Control dropped in like middle school. I want to say I was like seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. Like I was shocked. I think um, Meek Mill, I think the Meek Mill shit, I think he used uh, Undertaker's theme song, The Wrestler, 
I remember uh, he got fucking sued. If I remember that correctly. Hell no. He, he, he was... He tried he it. Some shit. He tried it, but I was like, bro, he got hit with that lawsuit fast. Drake is basically claiming that, given the fact that he's a bigger artist, if he says Kendrick's name, he's just doing him a favor. And this next one's not even a diss. I just want to show you guys my favorite line from the song. And niggas ain't got it, bro, still ice cream hate. I know y'all already know Mike Will made it. Just looking at the numbers, nigga, I feel amazing. I'll call Michael Jordan up and Mike Will make it. I'm the young rat. You know, he just signed a deal with Jordan. Mike Will made the beat. Shit's fire. Come on. However, just okay, a few days on? later, an issue of Vibe magazine was released, and Drake talks about Kendrick again, Wait, what? stating cool, cool, how he didn't like how the control verse messed with the rollout <laughs> of his album. Where it became an issue is that I was rolling out an album while that verse was still bubbling, so my album rollout became about this thing. Drake then continues to position himself as someone that is above anything that Kendrick has to say. He's hungry, so he's going to do what he has to do, like the BET cipher, but again, it's not enough for me to go. I have to realize I'm being baited, and I'm not going to fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove that he can play ball. No offense. Now, at this point in the story, we're about to witness one of the biggest upsets in Grammy history. At the 56th annual Grammy Awards, oh, Kendrick lost the hip-hop album of the year to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and rightfully so. Drake, you had something to do with this, did you? He could have. Not thinking about it. Because this was, like, so weird. You know, Macklemore, he was hot at the time. I'm not going to say he wasn't. He, his songs were everywhere, but, but a full was, album. Like, yeah, who was this full album for real? Like, I know the thrift shop. But was it thrift shop? That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. I think he had like yeah, another yeah, song he too. Did. Yeah. Was so I'm like, he had two songs compared to Kendrick's whole album, and he this nigga just won album. Like I don't know, it was weird. Drake, you probably did have something to do with this shit with your hating ass. He made a call. Um, don't forget, he Jewish. You're right. People were Not outraged. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. <laughs> all you got to do is look at Pharrell's face, cause it says it all. He's just trying to get off the stage as quickly as possible. Like what? Why did they get me to do this? And Macklemore, feeling the heat, decided to yeah, text yeah, Kendrick afterwards and say that he felt he should have won and that he got robbed. And it would have been a nice gesture if he didn't take a screenshot of the text and post it on social media for everyone to see. And just a month later, Drake gave his two cents in a Rolling Stone interview. You won. Why are you posting your text message? Just chill. Take your W, and if you feel like you didn't deserve it, Go get better, make better music. He has it felt cheap, it. it didn't feel genuine. Why do that? Yeah. Why feel guilt? You think those guys would pay homage to you if they won? He has something to do with it. Why are you this upset? Yeah. Why are you this upset about it? Because he wanted pause. Okay, if he wanted to pause, he can. Like, if he right. wants to. Why are you so upset? See, he be using motherfuckers to do something for him, like his dirty work. Yeah. Drake, you're. I mean, weird. that's what the, um, a mob boss tries to do. <laughs> I got my mom talk hmm. But yeah, like you had something to do with that. Yeah. Like you wanted him to talk his shit. Is that what it was? But the whole time, Mac was like, "Nigga, I don't even agree with this. My damn self." Right. <laughs> like, like, nigga. But Macklemore, he did not have to post that though. He didn't. Even, but he, he, he did it. I don't sure. know. It's weird. I mean, I don't. Am I? Well, like. I forgot, what do you say in the text? Like, uh, I, you got robbed, I'm sorry about that. Like, da da da. Is that what he said in the text? See, he, he said like a whole paragraph, so it was a lot. Uh, Cause I'm like. I, I mean, mean he like, could have kept that private. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, you don't, message. you don't have to post it on social media. It feel like he posted on social media so people will stop clowning him for like actually winning. You know, like Kendrick fans spamming like his comments. Pretty sure they was doing, they was, they, they were doing like that shit like back in the day, so. I mean, yeah. Am I wrong for saying like I don't see the wrong in posting? <laughs> I'm like I don't know because like or, like I do agree like I don't know like what was the point of you posting like like y'all conversation? I was like if that's the case like oh, he showed Kendrick's text yeah message? yeah what did Kendrick say? I don't know I forgot what he said I don't think he didn't show it but uh but still like you don't gotta show the text message like I don't know mm. like I don't know it was just weird to name just Kendrick that shit made me feel funny. No, in that case, you robbed everybody. We all need text messages. Now you guys tell me, does Drake seem like he's defending Kendrick in this article? Or does it seem like he's salty 
because he's not in the mix. At this point, the feud it's dies like down for cool. about eight Plain months, salty, and Drake even yeah. had some very kind words for Kendrick at his OVO fest when he brought out J. Cole. And while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. Yes. Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour together. That's one of the hardest niggas. They call me here. It seemed like he only did that because J. Cole is actually cool with Kendrick. That's what I'm saying. He being petty. Yeah. He's such a female. And that's what he did now with the whole first person shooter. And he always him keeps using Cole. Oh my god. So did Kendrick what, mention yeah, he said, uh, J. Cole? Like you dish out on him at a festival? Yeah. He's, he said that in a Not Like Us. He said you did Cole dirty or something like that. It was something like that. J. Cole, I hope you pop up at the June team. I do too. I hope you uh, pop out with uh, Ken and friends. <laughs> you do not need to be with. I'm not trying to, you know, be I mean, like you just pick sides, but yeah. if I was you, I would not be around Drake. Anymore. I mean, we live in a perfect world. It'd be cool to see all three of them on the stage together, but it, that's just not going to happen. It's just Drake so. doing too much. It's him ruining it's ego, everything. He go. With his whack ass. I don't like Drake. We, they, we know. They know. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him. <laughs> <No> <laughs> like, show. Like, Cause he just being. Yeah, I was saying, dude, ain't like the way he just moving in like this whole clip. He just look mad weird. But shout out to my nigga Drake. But shout like, out to my nigga. No, Cole. I mean not Drake. <laughs> my nigga Kendrick. But shout out to my nigga Drake. Ah, the, 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 uh, <laughs> why you saying Drake? <laughs> 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 Kendrick, damn. Shout out to my nigga Kendrick Lamar. We went on tour together. <laughs> yeah, like, Kendrick, come on, like you got his name in your mouth a lot. Like, jeez, yeah. bro. Kendrick, nah, I'm a nigga Kendrick, you know, cause we was on tour together. Like, what is the point of you doing that? That's when he brought out J. Cole. Oh. And why you all got your phones? Hey, watch this man move. Shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour together. That's one of the hardest niggas alive right there. That sounds legendary. So shout out to him. You should be standing right there. However, it Jay looks Cole like Kendrick did like, not get confused. the message as just two months later he responds to Drake's motor mouth line on a J-Rock track titled Pay For It. Mm. I tell him all the hell King Kendrick resurrected my vengeance been dissecting your motor mouth till I break down the engine. Mm. Clearly a response to Drake's mm. subliminal on the language. Again, Kendrick inserts himself as the king and he doesn't seem to think that Drake can go to distance with him. And it will be just two weeks later where Kendrick gets asked about this alleged diss. You know, a lot of rumors are with the Drake thing, like, you know, is, yeah. did you really bring the Drake thing back with the, with the Jay uh, Rock single, or what's that about? Well, what, 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 I hear about the, the Drake feud, or... See, oh, look at, look at him Drake. going. Look yeah. at the damn, man, no. you're disgusting. I do, that's, I do. <laughs> that's, that's people just, digging in, that's people yeah. digging in way too far. Once again, we're all hmm. reaching, and it's, it's not about Drake. And just a few days later, Kendrick would get asked about his now year-old control verse, and this time, he said that all the people that mattered understood it, and for the people who didn't, they don't matter. The people mm. that respect it, you know. For real, so, so, I mean... You know, people that knew the deal yeah. was the important people. <laughs> that respect it and knew what it was, and, and, you know, people that don't respect it, obviously, they just people that don't get it, and, and you know... Really didn't matter. And again, Kendrick claims yeah. that the chances yeah. of seeing him and Drake go head to head is slim to none because they're two different artists. It's just a whole nother dynamic. I can't see myself uh, going bar for bar with Drake. You know, we, we're two different type of artists. You, know you hate Drake. <laughs> I've argued that. And I honestly feel like that? this is just Kendrick so, down. Did Sean May say he needed Drake? Is that what he said? Or did I misunderstand? Charlie always says something. Yeah, I don't you hate Drake. I've argued that, and I honestly, I, don't know. I can't see myself uh, going bar for bar with Drake. You know, we, we're two different type of artists. You did. You hate Drake. I've argued <laughs> yeah, that, and I say, honestly feel oh, like this is just Drake. Kendrick oh, okay, okay. downplaying Drake as not being on his level. I don't think he respects Drake. I don't think he really ever respected Drake. And there's some underlying meaning behind this when he keeps him. saying yeah. Would Drake be somebody you would like to have some fun with? Nah, I, 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 I couldn't. Like we that. come from two different worlds, mm -hmm. two different backgrounds. I, I really don't see that uh, playing out, you know, as, as entertaining. Maybe to, you know, the people listening, you know, not for myself. Keep in mind, Kendrick was classified oh, as the saying. savior of hip-hop. He was embraced by everyone just for the art. Whereas someone like Drake really had to go to distance to prove himself, and even then, he could never win over the fans 
that it marred a certain that's, level of I'm lyricism. Saying, that's been Drake's biggest issue with respect. Yeah, that's he, all he fucking. He want respect from all like the legends. But it's crazy. It's like, dude, like Jay Z, cool with you, bro. It's like, if that's the case, I'm like, you should be fine. <laughs> like, I don't. It feel like Drake. He trying to. He trying to be like Thanos. He trying to get like all these damn Infinity Stones. He trying yeah. to get basically trying to get respect from like all like the greats, like like Jay Z, like Nas, to like and black Snoop Dogg, you know. And as black people. Yeah. He's trying to get accepted I'm like, and respected. It's like, dude, if accepted you know, accepted and respected. Yeah. That's what he wants. It's like, man, if you like, if you really believe like you really like, you know, like that guy or the boy or whatever, like that shit shouldn't even matter, bro. It shouldn't. Many consider Drake to be a pop star, and I feel like Kendrick is saying this without really saying it. Around the world. However, next Drake drops his surprise mixtape, if you're reading this is too late, and on that project, he had some more shots for Kendrick. They gon' say your name on them airwaves They gon' hit you up right after like it's only rap So Drake had claimed previously that he saw Kendrick just five days after the control to. verse And it was all love I know that that verse had no malice behind it Because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love And at this time Drake was the talk of the town Because this surprise project made a big splash So just a few weeks later Kendrick decided to shake things up and finally dropped his long-awaited album by surprise as well. Mm. Uh, and when I wake up, I recognize you looking at me for the pay cut, but I'm a seven. Naturally, fans and the media pitted the two albums against each other. Hendrick, bro, how do you let Drake drop a mixtape that goes harder than your album? A freaking mixtape. Not gonna compare Drake and Kendrick anymore because they're not even playing the same sport right now. Kendrick is in his own league. He is. And comparing is. these projects makes yeah, zero dumb. sense. It it's dumb. apples to oranges. Drake's project was great for club DJs, gym playlist, cruising in the car. Whereas Kendrick's album touched on real world issues, was chanted during pro one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. We gonna be all right. we gonna be all right. However, Drake wasn't done as he let another one go on the game's track 100. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. Again, Kendrick had just he released did it. Butterfly, his most conscious album to date. And Drake is basically saying that he could do that style if he wanted, but he's on a different mission with his music. He can't do okay. it at all. Well, like, Drake, you never did... I don't know, bro. You he... ain't do shit for nothing. I really do, like... I don't know. Me personally, I can't see Drake dropping like a like a conscious album, like him just rapping about like some really deep stuff. I can't. How can he do a conscious rap like an album if he can't be conscious with himself? Exactly. Make it make sense. Exactly. Like he can't even do that with himself. Y'all expecting him to do a conscious album and when he can't even do it himself? For real. He bro. already struggling to fucking get accepted in the black side and whatever. Oh, like, bro, like what? No. All the Drake fans who've been friends who've been fans of Drake for like this all the time like kind of like his whole career yeah. like me like i would say and like he never dropped the album with, like him just fully rapping it was all he, materialistic yeah he can't i don't know I, i'm just convinced he can't do it he can't do it he never will do it he no yeah so but, drake i hope you're watching it you can't do it bro you can't i'm sorry do it at all i'm sorry so important to note the video for this track was filmed in compton so drake is saying all this while in kendrick city I'm in the club every time that they play the competition If they even play the competition Then I seen a response to get Now the game was asked about this And he didn't seem to think it was a shot at Kendrick But he also didn't count it out Drake was taking some windows at Kendrick on that song And Kendrick caught it and wanted to return something I think that would be great for him However, one of the worst things to be exposed for as a rapper Was about to happen mm -hmm. to Drake What? <laughs> On July 22nd, 2015, Meek Mill took to Twitter to expose Drake for having ghostwriters. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, man. I can remember having a conversation with my little brother uh, on the phone and we were both saying like, there's no way. There's no way that Drake has ghostwriters because he's too good of a writer himself. It just doesn't make sense. That's where they get you. But boy, were we wrong. Okay, 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, man. Did you 
you hear the did you hear the reference tracks? Line for line. Word for word. This is bad. No, it's a, it's a terrible time to be a Drake fan. Shortly after Meek's tweets, the reference tracks would leak to support the Ghostwriter allegations. And now we get back to Kendrick, who just a few months earlier made reference to rappers with Ghostwriters on his single King Kunta. Mm. A record with a Ghostwriter. What the fuck happened? So basically, Kendrick King found Kunta. out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did, mm. and months before it even got exposed. And Kendrick is basically saying, like, I know what you've been up to, buddy. I'm not going to say anything, but I know. With all that said, as everyone knows, Drake responded to Meek Mill with a now legendary diss record back to back. Back to back like I'm Jordan 96, 97, whoa. And being a day one Drake fan, for me personally, I was never more proud of Drake in his whole entire career than when he dropped back to back. The new record, uh, back to back, tough tune. Take over. Tough, tough tune. But once again, Kendrick responds to Drake just one month later on Dr. Dre's Compton album. Mm. I feel like our enemies giving me energy, I wanna fight now. Subliminal sending me all of this hate. I thought I was holding the mic down. In this one, Bro, Kendrick really references good. Drake's like recent track, Enemies. Got enemies, got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is yeah, once again crazy. talking mm. about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different from what he's doing. Wait, oh, Kendrick said he hated subliminals? Yeah. He's got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is once again talking about how Drake keeps going yeah, the subliminal route. And I respect it because it's crazy. I remember as long as I hate subliminal, so it's like just fucking say it. So that's a, that looks like a Gemini, like kryptonite. <laughs> Cause I'm like, cause that's what Kanye said. Kanye said like, it is, yeah, it is. Kanye hard. said like, you know, he hates when Drake uh, sneak disses people because like, no one, like no one will like ever like even like understand it unless the person he's like sneak dissing like hears it. Yeah, that's almost like, bro. Yeah, Jimmy's we hate subliminals because it's like, just be straight up. Just stand on it, like, just be for real. Like I don't know, it's we. That's just it is our biggest pet. I guess it is our pet. We do not like subliminals at all. Cause it's like, bro, you either gonna say it or not. Cause us, we gonna stand on it and say it. We talking about you, maybe or maybe not. But like, we will say like, yeah, we're talking about you, bro. Like, we not scared to admit who we talking to or right. who we talking about. Cause what you gonna do at the end of the day? Nothing. Like that's why it's like, what you gonna do about it? Right. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like, so you wanna be all subliminal? Like that shit is not cute. That just mm -hmm. make you look pussy to us. Yeah. Basically, like it's just you being subliminal, like for what? Yeah. Especially when it comes to beef. Like, how you gonna be subliminal? <laughs> like, that shit yeah, don't even make sense. especially with this. Like, Dre, just stand on it. I'm yeah. talking about that big shit for what? Can't even flush it. Come on, huh? <laughs> At the end of the day, is really no different mm. from what he's doing, but he didn't stop there as he did it again on another song from the same album. They lie for the bury him, they nominated six to carry him. The beef is on his perfect inheritance, the drummer better than the great white. Cause this is life in my aquarium. The words they mm. nominated Six to carry him could potentially be a Drake reference given the fact that Toronto is referred to as the Six. And if this is the case, Kendrick is basically saying that everyone seems to think that Drake is his greatest opponent, but that he's a great white and that this is his aquarium, aka he's the king of hip hop. And do you ever look back on any and feel like you'd like to change any of the any of the things that you've written or uh it'll be me saying i want to go deeper i should have went deeper I see. <laughs> you know um i shouldn't have held back I shouldn't have held back. <laughs> and at this point kendrick finally gets his well-deserved moment at the grammys winning five awards but more importantly he finally clinched the best rap album category with to pimp a butterfly oh glory to god that's for sure Drake also racked up a bunch of accolades in 2015. If you're reading this, it's too late. Broke Spotify's record for 17.3 million streams in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts. Weak ass and song, his bro. collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. And I like, his hotline, I don't even know. Yeah, I remember at the time, like, all the Drake, like, pop songs, like, at that time, like, Hotline Bling, uh, Just Hold On, We're Going Home, whatever. I was not fucking with those songs at the time. And it's crazy that y'all... 
Anyway, I mean, just hold on. We'll come on. It's a good song now. It's just like, crazy how the fans make him like so hard. But how can you say he's so hard when he makes soft music? It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you can't say somebody is hard if they're making soft music. That don't make sense. I mean, people do it, but uh, that mean like Lil Wayne. I mean, he made like How to Love. So I mean, it's like I get it. Like they just trying to be versatile at the end of the day. But we talk I don't about know. Drake specific. I know. But like, it's like. No, <laughs> that no. boy been soft tissue. I'll say he, he always been. Everybody know Drake soft. Like that boy is not hot. Come on now. <laughs> and I mean, even at this point, anything Drake touches is gonna do numbers. Next, we yeah. get some inside information that this situation between Drake and Kendrick could have got really ugly. Former NFL player turned commentator Marcellus Wiley wouldn't say any names but said that years earlier he interviewed one of the two rappers and they completely went off on the other. <laughs> uh, the Drake Kendrick beef, uh, when it was really wow. starting to brew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on uh, Sports Nation at the time and we taped the interview with one of the people and that one person went in on the other person. Oh. We were ready to let this go, uh, but then that one person's team made sure that didn't get out. Yeah, so. that Marcellus was quoted in a DJ mm. Vlad interview as saying that the person went so hard in this interview that it could have brought the beef to the heights of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. And mm. you gotta keep in mind, Marcellus is trying to sell a book, and he claimed that in this book, he would expose everything that was said and who said it. And I bought the book. I oh, spent yes. the 39 I didn't read it, I searched it, and here's what he had to say. We even got Drake on tape talking major shit about mm. Kendrick during an interview. Of course, after watching the interview, Drake's publicist wouldn't let us air that tape, but we still got it. Take my word for it. So that's it. That is the big expose. Like, oh, I too Drake was on. cheated, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray by Marcellus Wiley. Now, crazy. we need to take any self-promotion tactics with a grain of salt, but the date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Kendrick drops the control verse on August 12, 2013. Okay. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter. And the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. And you guys could tell me what you think, but to me, I believe this story. I believe that Drake did this, 100%. I personally I mean, enjoy right. making like right. great music and bodies of work over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. However, in 2016, one man dominated the charts and that was Drake, smashing Her, record after views? record, pumping out hit after hit. Yeah, views. views sold one million in its first week and went on to become quadruple platinum that year. He had several great. number one records such as Work with Rihanna, For Free with DJ Khaled, and One Dance with Wizkid. One Dance actually became Spotify's most streamed song ever. Yeah, didn't and like Spotify song. also announced that Drake was the most streamed artist of 2016. Basically in 2016, Drake just dominated. And speaking of For Free by DJ Khaled, Drake actually mentioned Kendrick on that song. Like your boy from Compton said. You know this dick ain't free. Again, this appears mm. to be more of a friendly nod to Kendrick, where Drake is referencing his song, which is also called for free. This dick ain't free. However, 2017 was about to start, and Kendrick was about to take some of the most direct shots at Drake to date. What's most interesting? Oh, I was winning. I was winning, dog. Right, it's crazy. No, no smoke, dog. This, this shit has been on for so long. Hey, man, I was, it is crazy watching this for real. Cause like, yeah, man, uh, it's like this whole time back then, I, I never knew. Right. But, but the thing is, Kenji, he always responded back to this nigga, no matter fucking yeah. what. Like he always did. Yeah. And so, Drake kept it subliminal, and Kendrick just kept it subliminal. Diorette. Too, so. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh. I mean, that's what Drake was doing. Yeah, he was just giving the same energy. Yeah. But. It's crazy. Like, around so, that time, I did not know. <laughs> honestly, right. Yo, this shit is really not over for real. This it's not It's over. not. Because mm -hmm. this shit be going for way too long. For long. And y'all been watching our videos. We've been saying, like, we really. We genuinely do think, like, Drake is probably going to say something, or Kendrick's going to say something at, like, his show or something. Like, like she said, it's not over. It's, it's not, I'm not. telling you, because 
I'm, I'm keep saying this. I'm telling. I think Kendrick is waiting for Drake to. I'm. He waiting on him to drop some shit. I'm telling. He already got them shits lined the fuck up. He waiting yeah. for Drake to say. And some we shit. don't care that if his songs are pre-recorded because they still hit. Yeah, so it don't like, it doesn't even matter. Like he waiting on him. I'm telling you because Kendrick ain't over with. Cause bro, I think I know how Kendrick moves. Like yeah. he he definitely he's definitely waiting for sure. This shit is not over, bro. So this track in particular is the timing of when Kendrick put it out. Drake had just dropped his project More Life, which was mostly a happy-go-lucky summer vibe that contained no shots at Kendrick What? That's interesting, because he said it's supposed to have like a happy-go-lucky summer vibe. And that's what Drake has been saying since this whole beef has died out. He's talking about like he making summer hits. Mm. So... I don't know. It's interesting. It was mostly a happy-go-lucky summer vibe that contained no shots at Kendrick whatsoever. And just a few days later, Kendrick drops this surprise, aggressive, 116-bar track that is full of shots at Drake. We yelling one, two, three, four, five. I am the greatest rapper alive. So damn great, mother. I've died. It's no secret that Drake has claimed to be somewhere on this top five list. But more recently on More Life, he claimed that he was number one on that list. I know I said top five, but I'm top two, and I'm not two, and I got one. Thought you had one, but it's not one, nigga, no. Nah. So let me get this straight. Kendrick hears this That's track, a, uh, gets the pen out, jumps in I the think. booth, and sends a clear message just a few days after Drake drops that he's the best rapper alive. Ho oh, Jay-Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. Hmm. Drake's been known <laughs> to drop. Sit your punk ass down. Whoa. He's talking about that little nigga. <laughs> he's talking about Drake, right? Yeah. Bro. So. Talking about Ho. Nigga, sit your punk ass down. Well, Ho Jay-Z, sit your punk ass down. <laughs> that he's the best rapper alive. Uh, Ho Jay-Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. Drake's been <laughs> known to draw down. comparisons between himself and Hove, so it only makes sense that this shot was directed at Drake. I <laughs> this movie- sit your punk ass down. He is crazy. I don't blame him for saying that. My nigga, shut your ass. I used to wanna be on Rockefeller, then I turned into Jay. Lastly, Kendrick ends off the track to surprise fans and warn Drake that he's got a new album coming in a few weeks. You know what time it is, and up, yeah, this is him forever. Y'all got to late with the seven to get your shit together. Kendrick mm. was really strategic in releasing this track as it took most of the attention off Drake's project. And to add insult to injury, it his fans- It kind of did though, if you think, well, just a little bit. Oh, more life? I think that's what he was saying. Yeah, he's trying to say the hard part four took uh, took away from Drake's album. Block to Drake's oh. Instagram account and spam the number four in Roman numerals. And Kendrick, true to his word, he drops the album and he has some more shots for Drake. Niggas wanna flex on me and be in LA for free, huh? Next time they hit the TM freeway, we need receipt, huh? Kendrick references Drake's track for free, and although Drake is from Toronto, he's lived in Calabasas since 2012. With that said, Kendrick is more than likely talking about how Drake was in Compton while shooting the video for 100. Kendrick is from Compton, probably didn't like it. Most of y'all throw rocks and try to hide your hand. Just say his name and I promise that you'll see Candy Man. At mm. this point, Kendrick is begging Drake to just call him out. He makes a reference to a popular 90s movie, Candy Man, where the premise of that movie is if you say Candy Man's name five times, he'll come kill you. Kendrick is basically saying, if you say my name, your career is dead. And I think Kendrick has something on Drake. Something scathing, something. I heard you looking for Candyman, bitch. bitch. <laughs> you found him. You found him. I gotta put that clip there. <laughs> Drake doesn't want to see exposed. We've already seen Drake a couple times now try to dead this thing. There's more coming. But yeah, Kendrick keeps going. And Kendrick seemingly mocks Drake's style of music on his song, God. You feel some type of way, ah. <laughs> There's nobody gonna tell me that he's not mocking Drake here because Kendrick doesn't usually sound like he this. This is Drake. I'm about to oh. Next, we hear Kendrick on... I mean, he was talking about Drake. I was jamming that motherfucker album. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you feel some type of way, song, then. I forgot about so that glow song. It makes sense. Yeah, it's God. God. He yeah. God. Yeah. Mm, okay. Your smash hit mask off, 
and this one is a very direct response to one of Drake's shots. Platinum, platinum, platinum. Gotta look yourself and ask what happened. How y'all let a conscious nigga go commercial while only making conscious albums? Very mm. clearly a response to Drake's claims on 100 when he claimed that he could take all of Kendrick's fans if he were to pursue the conscious hip hop lean. Then I stayed on some conscious shit. But Kendrick had proven time and time again that he could have commercial success and be conscious at the same time. Yeah. At this point, he had three cohesive projects under his belt, all of which were extremely successful. I'm African American. I'm African. I'm black as the moon. Heritage of a small village. Part of my residence. Kendrick had also proved that he could easily navigate the pop music lane, having massively successful features with artists like Taylor Swift. We was OG like DOC, remember that? And again, when you listen to that track, he's not compromising his sound. Like, it is, he he's still so rapping. Mm -hmm. It's all bars. Now, I'm sure none of you forgot about Drake's Ghostwriter claims, and Kendrick didn't forget either. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Kendrick gave his two cents on the situation. It depends what arena you're putting yourself in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call myself the best rapper if I have a ghostwriter. If you're saying you're a different type of artist and you don't really care about the art form of being the best rapper, then so be it. Make great music, but the title, it won't be there. Exactly. And no matter how you slice it, the dude is not wrong. To be really? the best exactly. rapper, you need to write your bars. I would be lying if I said that when I found out that Drake had ghostwriters that I didn't look at his music differently. I still listen to his music, but even now, when he says something dope, I got this this little voice in the back of my head that says, Need Yeah, it's dope, it. but did, did he, he write it? Right. However, Drake attempts to keep it friendly again by tipping his hat to Kendrick when Damn outsold more life by over 100,000 copies. As it should. Amazing to see our music moving. A fan had also commented, Get Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole on the same record. For Bruce and Schroeder. Drake liked wow. the comment. Oh, yeah. Now, I hope at this point you guys can see the theme of Drake trying to squash it. And Kendrick seemingly responds to Drake's praise on his track All the Stars with SZA. Say your oh, God damn man. You need a little too little too late for that. But you and all your expectations. I don't even want your congratulations. Damn. Kendrick is not trying to hear it. Just save the bullshit. Oh you are born, you the moral to the story, you endorsing what the I don't even like you. I don't even like you, bro. Like, which is true. However, on the exact same day, Drake drops a track with some of his most obvious shots to date, Diplomatic Immunity. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. I taught you everything you know, now you got student pride. Drake does not like the Kendrick comparisons, and he brings it back to when he helped Kendrick with his career early on. What makes this clearly about Kendrick is the No You and I line, which were both tracks oh, from songs. Kendrick's The Pimp a Butterfly. And I love myself. The, world is the two would then go head to head at the 2018 Billboard Awards. Many questioned who would be crowned as Rapper of the Year, and once again, Kendrick came out drastically ahead. And yet again, Drake attempts to be friendly by sharing some old Twitter DMs between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Finishing my project, section 80. When you back in Cali? I know that shit will be incredible. We gotta do something for real. I'll be back for BET Awards this month. This and so this could be one or two things, yeah, yeah. really. Like, Drake could be saying, look, man, we used to be cool. Like, remember? Can we get back to that? Or he could be just throwing this back in Kendrick's face again he's that on. he's the one that gave him a start and, like, I put you on, remember? Yeah. Regardless of the reasoning, Drake still had another subliminal for Kendrick on Sandra's Rose. Bury me and I'll be born again. I walk in godly form amongst the mortal men. The mortal again, man. Drake Last makes song. reference to another track from To Pimp a Butterfly with the words mortal about. men. That's the song he was in talking this about one, talk. Drake continues to insert himself as being a caliber above Kendrick. But I don't know. I'm no mortal man. And Drake ends off the year with even more compliments for Kendrick in a Rap Radar interview. I have a lot of respect for him. You know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to, you know, stay true to what we started, started with mm -hmm. um, and finding new ways to do it. 
However, things were so quiet in 2020. Keep in mind, Kendrick wasn't releasing any music, and fans started to question if the feud was over. I don't think that the Drake-Kendrick tension is dead. I think that <laughs> last decade right they fought as this long as they could fought, and the decade ended without us having a decisive winner. And I don't think either of them have have gotten off of that. And people it call so Joe funny because it's happening right now. But we still don't think that shit over. No, I don't think it's over. Crazy all the time, but Joe Budden is right about a lot of shit. Yeah. He is. And while Kendrick has gone ghost, nowhere to be found, Drake completely dominated the music business. I'm talking about Oprah's bank account, Tussie Slide, Nonstop, In My Feelings, I God's Plan. What that fucking song? Opus bank account. Yeah, that's song. I like that song. I forgot how it fucking went, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot. I, I just, I didn't care about this song. Bro, that time I was even, I don't know, little yadi. Yeah, it took me a long yeah, time. Yeah, I didn't want to hear it because I totally forgot because it was trash as shit. Yeah, overrated. For nice that. for what? Pop star. Life yeah, he did have a lot of hits. Chicago so. freestyle. Laugh now, cry later. This is just undeniable. Like there's. There's no Drake other artist on Earth who was doing alive. this except for Drake. However, in 2021, the boogeyman himself, Kendrick Lamar, rises from the dead and has some shots for Drake on Family Ties with Baby Keen. Again, he's firing back at Drake's now overstated top five claims. Top five, no debate. Top five, top five, top five. And Kendrick would continue on to address Drake's claims about being the GOAT. I am the Omega. PG Lane Rolly Gang SID. Don't you address me unless it's with four letters. At the end of the track, Baby King you know seemingly better. reveals that Drake has been DMing his girl. Number yeah, Baby King, he has been saying that a lot of his songs. That Drake was like DMing like his girl or something. Oh, Drake was DMing Baby King girl? Yeah. Number two DM in my that's cool, I don't, that's why. However, just a month later, Drake yeah. would reply to Kendrick again on his song No Friends in the Industry. But a baby who the go then I make shit about the numbers all I know. Drake knows at this point when it comes to selling records, when it comes to breaking records, nobody is standing next to him in hip hop. He simply dominates on a commercial scale. With all that said, Drake was now celebrating 10 years of Take Care, and he decided to share an old photo of him and Kendrick. And I get it, like, He's you know, so he helped with the project, him. nice gesture, but why keep doing this? Why keep being yeah. friendly to someone who doesn't respect you? However, at this point, four years have passed since Kendrick had dropped an album, and while he was on a milk box missing, you Drake was still very him. much right. active, releasing Certified Lover Boy. That album went on to break Spotify's record for the most streams in a single day, and in that same year, he also had some notable bangers like Wants and Needs with Little Baby. Hey, yeah. Come with a classic, they come around years later and say it's a sleeper. But finally, after five fucking years, <laughs> we get the Kendrick album. Rain on me, put the blame on me, got guilt, got hurt, got shame on me. And, and sadly, a lot of people did not like this album. I'm not one of them, I absolutely loved it. I'm also a big therapy guy because I'm, I'm bipolar. I don't really have any choice but not be a therapy guy, but this project definitely connected with me, at least. Mm -hmm. And it was on this album where Kendrick admitted on a song that he didn't understand why. Oh, but um, yeah, anyway, when Mr. Morale first came out, it took me like a while to really understand it. Cause like when it first came out, I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Like, but I listened to it probably like, uh, like when this whole beef had like started, like I went back to it. I'm like, it does get better. It does get better, for sure. It was on this album where Kendrick admitted on a song that he didn't understand why Drake and Kanye squashed their beef. When Kanye got back with Drake, I was slightly confused. Guess I'm not what you I think. Guess I'm healing to do. And in my opinion, this is just Kendrick's way of telling Drake that he has zero intentions of ever patching things up with him. And there's people that we meet all the time that we just don't like. Like, sometimes yeah. it's for no reason at all. And Kendrick's got a reason. Next, Drake gets extra petty by releasing a dance album, Honestly Nevermind, on Kendrick's birthday. Oh, wow. If I come around you, can I be my 
that was like the most weakest Drake album. Drake knows movie. damn well really that Kendrick so is the last person that would ever release a project. Now that makes sense why oh. why they did the Hillbilly song. Him oh, and Baby King. Because really? uh, that song, uh, Sticky, it's on Drake's. Uh, honestly, never mind. They uh, copied Drake's flow on that song. On the hillbilly song. Excuse me, is that your yeah. girl? Yeah. Now that makes sense. I, I didn't know Drake dropped the shit on Kendrick. I was going right to say, there. that also makes sense as to why he kept dropping them diss tracks on the date of, like, uh, Tupac birthday, yeah. Father's Day. or Was it Father's Day? I think he was something like Father's Day. Father's Day, and then... Um, like Canada or some shit. But, uh, yeah, uh, it was some other shit. Why it was he, a lot. So, now yeah. that makes sense why he did it, because... Drake, Drake did, did that, that. dropped that show on his birthday. Oh, that's whack shit. That's crazy. <laughs> like this one, and what better way of saying, look at how versatile I am, than by dropping a project like this on his birthday. Now, I don't think this little stunt bothered Kendrick at all, but it was still pretty strategic from Drake. But Drake was not done yet. On a track with Lil Uzi, he took some really obvious shots at Kendrick. Song, by the way. Fake walk, makes fake beats. There ain't no fake for me. Yeah, yo ass a little sneak peek, yeah. So, just a few months earlier, Kendrick had very similar wording on his N95 track. Drake is insinuating that Kendrick is more or less running a grift when it comes to what he's saying in his music. He's basically claiming that Kendrick doesn't really stand by or believe what he's preaching, and he also reminds Kendrick that he's the one who put him on. Please what stay. made this he's reference this. even more right. obvious is the line, now you gotta take a back seat, which is clearly a reference to Kendrick's backseat freestyle. My mm. mind is living on cloud nine and this nine is never on vacation. And just like me, it looks like Drake really enjoyed Kendrick's new project as he showed up in the audience at Kendrick's show in Toronto. <laughs> Again, Drake knows what he's doing. He knows the blogs are going to pick this up. The question is, was he there to show love or was he there to play chess? I mean, at this point, based mm. on the history of Drake's friendliness, I'm just going to chalk it up to him just trying to be cool with him again. Probably, and for yeah. Kendrick, what better way of taking five years away than by dropping an album and cleaning house again at the BET Awards. Going into the awards, Drake was way ahead of everybody with 14 nominations, but it didn't matter because Kendrick mopped the floor with them, winning Best Hip Hop Video, Best Live Performer, Lyricist of the Year, Video Director of the Year, Album of the Year, and Artist of the Year. However, Drake wasn't very impressed with Kendrick's five-year delay, and he let everyone know about it while on tour. I don't know about these guys that go away three, four, five years want to chill out and all that shit. That's not me. And I want to ask Please. you guys this. How many times has Kendrick said something nice about Drake in the last decade? Zero. Mm. Fucking zero. It's all been Drake. We've got seven or eight examples here in this video that of Drake true. complimenting Kendrick, saying that he wants to do music with him, reminiscing on old times, just being friendly with him, and Kendrick has said fucking nothing. I gotta tell you something. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. He came across my feet. Edited. Edited. Good to see it edited correctly. Hey, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up! Now shout out to him. What's the dirt once again? Yeah, I'm mean, sorry, but yeah, Drake is the one who's trying to be... Yeah, Drake just trying way too hard to be cool and I'm like... When he already burned the bridge. It's like, dude, like, he been told you he doesn't like you. Like, he probably, he probably told Drake that shit, like, straight up. I would not be surprised. And it's like, I don't... Man, a nigga like Drake... Or he just can't, like he can't Drake, let that go. He can't accept that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shout out to What's the Dirt, no, man. It's crazy. He dropped this video six months ago. Excuse this was me, before. Show, this was before all the diss tracks. That's crazy. Right. And then now it all adds up. It's just all the diss tracks is adding up. Now it's making sense why can you just went the fuck off, Andre? Because he's so tired of that nigga. Yeah, for real. Like, I would be too, but he keeps trying to be, nigga, I don't care. Leave me alone, shit. Yeah. And he keep on hanging that picture, like, all yeah. pictures on by the neck. Like, he keep on, no one cares no more, Drake. Right? That shit's old as fuck. Yeah, I don't know. He gotta give up some of all. grudges Yeah, it's like, bro, you gotta stop saying, like, you put him on. Like, I like, bro, he, like, Kendrick said, and not like us, like, I've been doing this shit since, like, 2009. Like, come on, bro. Right, like, he want Drake just wanted to sign Kendrick so bad. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's like he wanted Kendrick to do like a co-sign for him or something. Ooh, I said that wouldn't yeah. Drake's dark history with female celebrities. I already know. Uh, I don't know. I can name a couple females that are gonna be on this video. But uh, <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for another reaction. Oh, he got this one too. Yeah. Put these in the watch later. Hell no. You gonna do what you want? So uh yeah, this was a good video. Like honestly, this this is six months ago and now it's everything just adds up now. It does. Kendrick is tired and nigga and Drake is trying hard to be translating again. Right. And uh now we wait for a Kendrick show. Yeah, I think that shit is not over. It's next week. I ain't gonna lie. I think it is next week. Yeah, it is next week. And his birthday next week as well. So yeah. Gonna be an interesting, interesting week. Yeah, I'm gonna say this shit is not over with And Drake him and that dropping music still, so it's like, hey. But we're gonna see what's gonna happen. You already know we're gonna be here to react to it. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button, hit the noties, hit the like button, comment down below your thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. Um like I said, comment down below your favorite verse from fucking problems from damn like oh, yeah, 10, right. 11 years ago. Um, right. Comment down below how you feel about Drake. Comment comment down below how you feel about Kendrick and all this. Mm -hmm. Shout out to What's the Dirt. Mm -hmm. And we out. Yeah. She thinks she fuck with me, so she gon' try to leave a man. But she blew me in the past, so she blew her chance. I told her.